Hi again, everyone, and thank you for being this flexible. We actually rushed from the main session to uh, this Barely room. hear you. Oh. Yeah. I hear a noise. Divine voices. <laughs> Um, but thank you very much for joining. Um, just now for the record, this is the NRI's coordination session, third in row. As you know, we started this practice uh, with uh, three years ago, actually, in, um, in the Mexico IGF. And the purpose of this coordination session is for all NRI's to meet face to face, uh, to meet with the representatives from UNDESA, that is the institutional home of the IGF, as you know, uh, with the representatives of the IGF Secretariat, with the chair of the MAG, and of course with the interested members of the MAG, and the wider IGF community, especially the supporting organizations to the NRIs. So this year is no exception. I'm very happy that uh, we have a number of NRIs present here. Also, a number of NRIs are present online that unfortunately could not travel to Paris. And uh, also very happy to have, um, uh, I think, a new face to us. Um, Mr. Stefan Schweinfest, from, uh, who's going to represent the UNDES. I'm going to leave the introduction uh, to you. Um, the agenda for this meeting is uh, developed in a bottom-up manner, as you know. I will just very briefly go through it, just to kind of remind everyone that we are focusing, first of all, on increasing visibility of the IGF through the NRIs and NRIs through the IGF. How can, specifically, how can the IGF help the NRIs, uh, advancing the legitimacy of the NRIs, securing cooperation between IGF and NRIs, especially through the main session that we um, organize for the IGF annual meeting, collaborative sessions, the NRIs participation in the IGF's intersessional work, the NRIs uh, contributions to program planning of the IGF. We will also discuss the idea of creating an online observatory for all NRIs, uh, move to how can the NRIs help the NRIs, secure funding for the NRIs, and we will briefly touch upon uh, on the potential engagement of the NRIs with this newly established uh, high-level panel on digital cooperation by the Secretary General. Uh, since some of us have, uh, I think, flights to catch, so I will uh, maybe give the floor firstly to, uh, to Stefan to open this discussion, and uh, we will then move with the formal agenda. Uh, thank you very much for, for being here and I must, I must confess this is the last thing I'm doing here because I'm one of those persons that needs to move to the airport. But this was important to me uh, because it's really a particular pleasure. Now I will just introduce where I'm coming from. I'm in DESA already a director of the statistics division which is one of the divisions in DESA. But then the d division that is actually over uh, the home of the IGF uh, which is which used to be called uh, DPADM, Public Administration uh, Development Management, is now called Public Institutions and Electronic uh, Government, uh, Digital Government, sorry. Um, we uh, is currently without a director. So Mr. Liu, the, my boss, whom you've also seen, uh, said this gentleman here, he doesn't have enough work to do with his statistics division, he can help us out with this one. So I unfortunately am only here temporarily, but I'm discovering a whole new world. And thanks to the Secretariat and, and people like Lynn, whom I met professionally over the last couple of months, this is happening since March, I've really discovered this whole universe and I find it extraordinarily exciting and also very much related to where I'm originally coming from. Data and statistics have a lot to do. We're having discussions like privacy discussions and so how do we use the internet and also to manage data and so there are big correlations. So when I go back to my original corner, I will certainly go there enriched. So when I uh, learned about the IGF, I must confess, I, I, I mean, this is the thing at the United Nations, when you go into a new area, uh, era, area, then you have to learn all of the acronyms, no? So I was, uh, and somebody came and says, you have to talk to the NRIs. And I said, okay, I'm happy to do that. And they, 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 they sound like interesting and nice people, but who are they? So, I mean, I had to learn my lesson, what, what NRI stands for. And I think this is when I really discovered the heart and the essence, I think, of the IGF process, because at the beginning I was very much, uh, uh, when I learned about the IGF, I said it's a global process. This is, uh, of course, all very, very important, but how is it anchored? Where is the connection to the real life and the people and the, on the ground? 
and this was the answer. The NRIs are the answer. They are really playing this critical role of connecting an a priori global process to the local perspectives. And you could hear yesterday uh, our big boss, the Secretary General, has a couple of concerns on his mind. And of course, he comes from the Sustainable Development Goals uh, background where the mantra is leave nobody behind, leave no one behind. And I think that, that puts all of us in the UN in New York in a spirit of seeking the connection to the individual because we are really there for the individual, for all of those. How can we make the internet useful for each and everybody on this planet? And first and foremost, perhaps also to those who don't even have access to it right now at this point in time. So I think uh, the NRIs are really playing, this I now understood, the vital role and they keep the pulse of the IGF also going, that it's not only just one big event this year in Geneva, next year in Paris, or next year in Berlin, and next year I don't know where, but I mean there are intersessional uh, uh, work is going on everywhere around the planet. Last week somebody said, oh, I saw you in Khartoum, and I said, excuse me, in my entire life I've never been to uh, Sudan. And then I said, no, you were, I mean, on the big screen. And so and I said, oh, yes, I did. I mean, I, I was actually welcome at the African IGF, and, and it was a pleasure to me. That was, again, my first exposure of what the 111 officially organized and recognized uh, uh, NRIs are doing. So I'm really impressed. I, I, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear more of your work. I know you are working in exactly the same DNA matter as the global with all of the key words, I mean, multi-stakeholder, bottom-up, participatory, open, inclusive, non-commercial, these are all key words that guide everybody's work. So um, we, uh, we do have issues to discuss here, and I saw, I saw that from your agenda, what is exactly your status, how can we help you to be even more effective, to be visible, to be uh, recognized. And also there is, of course, always the perennial problem of funding and so, which we can discuss here, uh, which is discussed at all levels. It's discussed at the global level. I mean, when we, we, we had just a meeting with donors this morning and how we get the IGF and the global secretariat that you know so well going and so on and so forth. But I mean, we have to have a, a common discussion, discussion of how can we uh, support all of the important activities of the IGF, including the NRIs, from the very bottom up to the global level in either Geneva or New York. So again, it's a pleasure for me to talk to you um, and to get to know you and to listen a bit to your concerns. And if you have any questions, we as the Global Secretariat in New York, together with our IGF Secretariat in Geneva, we are very much committed to uh, supporting your work all around the world. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. Before we maybe open uh, directly the floor for questions in accordance with, with our agenda, can I just quickly ask uh, Lynn, as the chair of the MAC, to just say a couple of welcoming words for the beginning? Thank you. I'm glad to be here again um, with everybody. And, you know, I'm always so happy to see certainly the growth in the NRIs, both the, the sheer number of them, but also the activities. And as I said before, I think we just continue to go from strength to strength. Um, was really pleased this year in particular to see the main session, which was co-organized, and also the five collaborative sessions that the, that the um, NRIs have here. Um, I think one of the things where we really are um, anxious to understand is how do we just continue improving? You know, I always say um, so much of what we're doing in the internet space and in the internet governance space is all about evolution and improvement because so much of what we're doing, we're doing for the first time or certainly in some of the earlier, um, uh, you know, earlier movers, if you will, in, in a lot of these activities. So really um, anxious um, as the kind of representative of the MAG here on this panel. There are some MAG members in the, in the room as well to really understand what we can do to increase the collaboration. I was at a session this morning and somebody said when you speak about cooperation, it tends to seem hierarchical. And if you speak about collaboration, it's more of kind of a network distributed sort of effect. Um, and I think that's, that's what we are and it's how we actually relate across all of the activities within the IGF um, ecosystem. So really just interested to hear what we can do um, to deepen the relationship, 
um, where you think there's areas of improvement, what we can do to help, and certainly also interested in sort of your experiences of the collaborative session and the main session here, because of course what we do try and do, of course, is continue, continue trying to um, improve, improve those sessions as well. But given we have instructed every one of the organizers of these sessions to try and spend at least 50% of the time in exchanges as opposed to panelists speaking, um, I'm actually going to stop with just those, you know, very sort of brief um, words of, of welcome and certainly great appreciation for all you do um, back in your own nations and regions, but all you contribute here. The IGF would not be nearly as rich, nearly as rich, um, without all the, the contributions of the, of the NRIs. So really look forward to your comments here or, you know, of course, offline as well. Anya? Thank you very much, Lynn, for your very kind words. And finally, I'm going to ask Chen Yutai, uh, as the head of the IGF Secretariat, to provide a couple of welcoming remarks, and then we will uh, continue with the agenda. Uh, thank you very much, Anya. I'll be very quick. I mean, uh, I will not repeat uh, what Stefan and Lynn have said, but I totally agree with them, and they totally encapsulate my feelings as well. So um, thank you very much. We do appreciate all your work, and over the last two years, we have increased our collaboration, and I think it is in a non-hierarchical manner, and the flow is back and forth, it's not just top down, it's from you to us and back again, and that's how it should be. And we will continue to support you, and of course as you support us, and um, we do try and part part participate in some manner if we can't go there physically. Uh, last year we only managed to go to the Afghanistan IGF and also the Asia Pacific IGF. Um, but, and, and next year we'll also try and uh, visit some other IGFs. Um, but um, thank you very much, and if you have any ideas, please come to us, and we will, and of course you've got Anya here who's been doing uh, very great work uh, coordinating all of you, and, or collaborating with all of you, sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Changatai. And I think now we can formally move with the agenda that um, you all helped to develop. And maybe uh, I will ask you to raise your hand on the very first agenda item is how can the IGF help the NRIs? So it's a very broad question, but I think uh, you will manage to be very specific on this question. Yes. You would like to speak? Well, thank you for the opportunity, Anya, and let me introduce my name. Uh, my name is Freddy Pataya, and I'm here with uh, Mr. Indriya Indri Nobanyamurti and Mr. Doni. We are from Indonesia IGF, but I am also representing the Youth Indonesian IGF. And at the first place, we would like to uh, deliver sort of a report on the organizing of our national dialogue, Indonesia. Indonesian Internet Governance Forum, our national dialogue with the theme, Internet that could be trusted, freedom, safety, and sovereignty. So we try to make a correlation between current IGF global team with our national team, in which during the discussion of our national dialogue, we happen to have a lot of discussion on infrastructure as well as social and economic. We also fortunately were able to have uh, we also are fortunately able to organize a youth forum as well in our national dialogue. The issue that happens then following the national dialogue is how we can follow up this issue to the level of policymakers. We understand that internet issue is not only our national issue, it's not only a domestic issue, but is an issue that related to cross-border situation. and. I think what we can say here is that we still really need a cooperation and of course knowledge sharing from the other jurisdiction, from other countries on how, they, uh, on, on how their approach and measures in anticipating the both good and bad impact of the internet. I think that will be it for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the question is, how can the IGF help the NRIs? And I'm going to ask um, the NRI colleagues to try to be maybe specific. 
uh, on this question as much as it's possible. If you could just raise your hand or even unmute yourself, it's not a big group. Yes, Sarina Sidik. Thank you, Anya. Sorina Telanu speaking on behalf of the Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance, the Executive Committee. I'll repeat a thing I think we said two years ago at the same coordination meeting. What we would like to reiterate, I would say, um, and it's not necessarily about the IGF Secretariat, but about support from UN as such, we would very much welcome anything you can do to help us, at least in our region, it might be the same with others, reaching out to governments. We have had this challenge, at least in our first three years, when you go and talk to a government and you send them a letter, they just don't look at you because, okay, so who are you? What is an IGF initiative? Why should I pay attention to that? If there's a second letter coming from UN DESA or someone um, else at UN, I'm pretty sure that would make a difference. So any support in that direction would be very much welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. Marilyn? My comment, I think, is a follow-on to um, the reference that was made. What I see as the greatest challenges um, across most of the NRIs that I'm familiar with is the getting the, getting the access to multiple government agency representatives who participate on a consistent basis, so it's not only the the NRI is not viewed as the purview of only the Ministry of Communications, but it is understood and supported that multiple ministries uh, at the agency level, such as health, education, agriculture, depending on the country. Um, and I will just say, I'm not speaking for any of the African countries or the Caribbean, but my observation is that in certain countries, the Ministry of Tourism is a major potential partner because of the, um, the introduction of ICTs and the creation of jobs varies and the opportunity varies from uh, country to country. In, but I think a second significant challenge is reaching the business representatives and that is true in every country that I'm familiar with and it is true in the United States as well. We have a core at IGF USA. I, have, I work for a major corporation that have extensive contacts into the major corporations in the tech sector. But what we don't have is participation and engagement from the financial sector, the manufacturing sector, the healthcare sector. And what the UN has in its bully puppet role is the opportunity to say to the CEOs and executives who participate in the Broadband Commission or in other commissions, you should be aware of the opportunity and the importance of telling your regional VP team to get engaged at the national and regional level. And just those messages coming from the UN that are encouraging this would be, I think, extremely effective and also very effective um, at the national level where if there were a uh, general invitation that could be incorporated into the invitation from the steering group, it would be likely to get more attention. Thank you, Marilyn. Yes, please. Well, uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but uh, I would like to introduce ourselves. We represent the youth IGF movement. Uh, we are active in 37 countries, and uh, we are here uh, now from five countries, Maria from Ukraine, and uh, Bernardo from Portugal, Agita from Indonesia, uh, me from Lebanon, and we also have a junior from Haiti, but uh, it's now on the bus. Uh, well, uh, we would like uh, to say that we, uh, we want to be more involved on uh, your activities at the national level. Uh, so we need more support from 
the national IGF. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, please. Hi. I'm Kosi from Guinea. I'm sorry for my bad English. <laughs> uh, I, I, if I understand, the question is how the global IGF can help the national and regional IGF. If I get our experience in Benin, before we g became NGO system, uh, it's difficult to talk about multi-stakeholder process with government. We don't understand why the person who have any uh, statute like NGO or private sector or government came and talk about mobilization. Government came on the same table with another stakeholders and talk about something who can become a process to get information, right? Process to have knowledge, but also process to have a discussion like our national uh, CCTLD are not working. Why? Our internet is bad now. Why? When we talk about that, issues, special issues, it's important to have statute before talk to government. Is it possible we will make, we transform our national IGF to NGO system before have opportunity now to talk directly with government, directly to another NGOs and directly to private sectors. Is it, uh, we don't know if it's legal to move from stakeholder space to NGO and talk of, uh, to all of them on the same place. Is it legal? Is it normal? Is it some process we can share anywhere? We don't know, but we make it. Thank you, Kwasi. Um, any other inputs? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, well, um, I would like to add a few points from uh, Michelle, uh, which is my colleague from Lebanon. So we do aware that um, the UNIGF has already a couple of youth initiatives that has been listed as well in the, in the website, which is where coming from the um, youth IGF movement under DTAC, um, Together Against Cybercrime International. Um, also, in the same time, we do aware that each of the national um, IGF itself, there is a couple of youth that has been recognized. Um, I would like to raise a question, um, how can we collaborate together? That's first. And then um, a second one, as a national um, IGF in the country and the regional um, IGF, how um, the youth IGF under the national and the youth IGF movement can um, synergize and collaborate together in terms of um, spreading awareness um, for internet governance to the young people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Francesco. Hi, my name is Francesco Pirro and I work for Italian Digital Agency. Um, I want to say that uh, this year uh, the Italian Digital Agency promote uh, the IGF, uh, the Italian IGF, and I noticed that uh, we have um, we had uh, uh, many difficulties to involve uh, uh, high-level politicians in uh, our initiative, and uh, I think that um, it is for uh, different reasons. Uh, the first that uh, IGF uh, tra treats uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, multidisciplinary uh, sector and, and um, every sector in uh, a very deep way. Uh, and then uh, the difficulties of our politicians to 
be involved uh, in it in it um, the second that uh, uh, is uh, IGF uh, is uh, mm, once a time for a year not uh, a structural um, event uh, for all the year uh, but uh, one day for uh, one year uh, and the third uh, the last uh, but not least uh, um, that uh, um, in my opinion uh, it, it, it would be necessary uh, to have uh, outcomes from uh, global IGF uh, um, that became a, a, a recommendation a guideline um, in order to transform uh, ideas, many good ideas, uh, in actions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Liana, and then Sandra. Thank you very much, Liana Gaussian from the Armenian IGF. Uh, I would like to emphasize the role of the focal point of NRI's Anya, that she's doing the tremendous work throughout the year. It's not only preparation for this annual meeting with the whole community on a bottom-up way, but the intercessional activities, what we're doing, the support of the network, the coordination of the whole work. And uh, it would um, be really great that we have a sustainability of uh, that role and uh, the importance uh, of that coordination that she's doing. We appreciate it a lot with all the NRIs and the network and we would like that to be continued in a very sustainable way. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. Sandra? Sandra Hoferichter speaking from Eurodic, the European IGF. I would just echo what uh, Liana just said. It's really great that we got Anya and that uh, after a long time of demands, we got this focal point at the IGF secretaries. Otherwise, this network would not come to results. So thanks very much for this. Um, on the other hand, I, you were asking what the IGF secretariat could do for the NRIs. I think it's not a one-way road. I think we have to think in both directions because there is a lot that the NRIs can actually do for the sustainability of the IGF. And uh, I have two examples that uh, I learned during this week might be really uh, a great opportunity for the NRIs to contribute to the IGF and help strengthen it. The first is that um, we should actually, we have so many good examples on the national level where a discussion from a so-called talk shop really led to a concrete action or to a concrete uh, result. And I think we have to promote this, that these examples exist. Many times the IGF is called as irrelevant and, and all these things. I think that's unfair and that's also not right. There are so many good examples where on a national, regional or on the global level even, concrete action uh, was the result of a discussion that started at an IGF. And I think we have to make that visible and we have to, to, to let everyone know about this. And one really good um, opportunity to do this is via the open call from the uh, UN panel on digital cooperation. They should know about, the highest UN level should know about how the IGF can really be the IGF movement, and I'm not talking about only the global one, but also the NRIs, how we can really make a difference. I think we have to voice that out, we have to make that vocal. And then secondly, this was also an idea I found out over this week, is um, the uh, UN panel uh, will submit a first draft end of April, beginning of May, that's the plan. Why not invite those people then to the, uh, to the national IGFs, to the regional IGFs, to explain the report, to discuss it, and then maybe after one year to revisit what are the recommendations? Have they been brought forward? What happened to this recommendation? I think here um, this panel can really gain some great input from the nationals, from the regionals, and also from the global IGF, and this is not a process that uh, is limited to one year. We can revisit these recommendations even after three or after five years and really see what uh, kind of results uh, came up of, out of this uh, recommendation. And I think if we do this, we strengthen us vice versa. It's not the one-way road. We are strengthening 
the global IGF or the IGF movement as such. And of course, this will positively fall back also to the uh, visibility and recognition of the national NRIs. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would maybe take one more question from the Ukrainian IGF, from Vitaly, and then, since we took a lot of questions, then maybe uh, take a break just to uh, summarize and uh, respond as much as we can and then continue. So, Vitaly. Uh, thank you. Responding to the question how the uh, Secretariat of EGF uh, could help local uh, EGFs, uh, in Ukraine um, we have dangerous legislation which threaten uh, internet freedom and we're trying to engage into uh, our local EGF uh, members of parliament who are responsible for creating quite dangerous legislation. Uh, but they are not very, uh, they are not motivated uh, to come and maybe if we could invite members of parliament from the countries, from different countries with the same context uh, and you could help with it, uh, we could probably facilitate this meeting and uh, bring this, like, to make the discussion between different countries because uh, sometimes um, members of parliament feel that uh, we don't want to go into the events which are organized by tech community and civil society organizations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do see we have three more hands. If you can be brief, then we maybe take them. You have time. Um, so maybe uh, Adama, then Paul, then Mary, and we'll stop there temporarily just. My name is Adama. I'm from the Gambia IGF. Um, I, we are hosting the West African IGF next year, and we are really hoping that we will get the full support from the IGF Global. Um, in all resources. So um, the other issue that I wanted to talk about is uh, <coughs> this uh, position under controlling of CCTL list that we, the Gambia has issues with. Um, currently it is being um, controlled by a private person from Germany, another country, and this has been an issue, an ongoing issue. The government and all other stakeholders um, of the IGF have been trying to, um, to retrieve it and take ownership of it, but it has been an issue. So um, I just wanted to mention and how we can, um, how um, IGF or any other um, party can help us to um, to retrieve it and uh, make it a Gambian, a Gambian uh, ownership. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dama, Paul, and then Mary. Yes, Namibia. Yes. Yeah, just getting my uh, name tag. Uh, Paul Rowney from the Nam IGF. Um, from, from my perspective, uh, the NRIs, uh, they have a grassroots view. It's the bottom-up approach, uh, whereas the uh, Global IGF and the IGF Secretariat has a high-level view, top-level view. So my, my suggestion here is that uh, the Secretariat can help uh, identify the common themes or issues that are being deliberated at uh, the NRI level and help cross-fertilize between the different NRIs, because we have common themes, but we're not always aware of what else is happening, and that strengthens some of our uh, debates and discussions at uh, a local level. Thank you, Paul. Mary? Thank you, Anya. Thank you, Anya. I, I want to echo what Liana and uh, Sandra has said about the, the focal point, and uh, uh, from um, I'm speaking also on behalf of uh, Colombian IGF, uh, I think um, uh, Huyana is on another, so he sent a, a note to me that I should also raise that issue that the, secretary, the IGF should um, not overlook the good work that has been and uh, want it sustained. Um, the work, the focal point, it's really organized the network properly and for from Nigerian IGF and uh, West Africa IGF uh, the truth is that at West African level the heads of state the heads of uh, government through the uh, through the ECOWAS has has good knowledge of the West Africa IGF just like the former the lady from Zambia has said so the IGF West Africa IGF is more or less less accepted by the government uh, in, uh, in West Africa. So they are willing to host uh, each, each of them. And they have 
relationship with the ECOWAS level. So maybe that's another thing we'll look at, whether we could use that as a model, having the regional, regional uh, economic uh, blocks um, uh, get involved and get connected and engaged. Uh, and uh, when we started Nigeria IGF, it was a question of who sent you, who are you, where are you coming from, and uh, how, can, how can you start, where is the government backing? whose government is, which government is backing you. So we are saying if there's anything that the, the IGF could do in the way of the normal uh, UN process to inform uh, countries about the, the initiative so that the government would also support it. That's what we want to see IGF uh, do for us. And in return, we should give feedback to the IGF Secretariat. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, I see Wisdom's hand, but I would maybe uh, leave it for after we respond to this first, first set of questions. Since Stefan needs to leave, maybe we can start from uh, the questions that were relevant for Stefan's domain, especially I think when it comes about uh, the engagement with the government that was asked here, maybe even formal certification and liaison with the Secretariat. Uh, so can we just touch upon that? Maybe yep. your advice would be very helpful. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm a statistician, I count. So there were 13 interventions, so, and uh, I was quite impressed. Uh, even though they're coming from very different parts of the world, there were a couple of themes that were very much in common, and which, which I think is a good thing. Uh, and I was also impressed by the sense of community they convey because I mean I think I think we can it really gives you the feeling that we are all in the in, in the same boat together working at different levels working in different places on this planet but I mean I think there's a common vision and, and, and that that unites us so that was very gratifying to to, 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 to sense this up here so I, I, I have five points that I would like to pick up, and I hope I, I do you justice. I mean, first point is came several times. How, do, how can we help uh, to reach out to policy levels, to government? Marilyn reminded us that it should not be only one person in the government or one institution because that we need the government is broad. I mean, the different layers of government. And of course, in the SDG area where I'm coming from, we are preaching all the time and having an integrated approach to government anyway which we do as a division also anyway. So, I mean, how can we help? This is a very current theme, as somebody mentioned also, not only government, business, high-level leaders. Um, so what can we do? I think we can, the Secretariat certainly should help in that. I mean, if there are also letters that we can write and help to establish, I think, a, a national institution, or if there's a particular event that you are planning and you're trying to reach out to uh, uh, um, uh, certain uh, uh, government institutions or partners, businesses or whatever, whoever they may be, multi-stakeholders. I think we can certainly put uh, uh, the power of our signature and the United Nations name behind, behind it because, I mean, you are part of this larger process and so on and so forth. So I'd be happy to explore specific proposals um, and with the Secretariat. I'm new to the Secretariat. I'm also open to hear what kind of general processes there may be existing to give you uh, a more weight. Uh, I'm, I'm also wondering how this works. I mean, some of you do have MAG members in your own countries. I'm sure that they would be a good point to go to where we can establish this. I hear a lot about regional cooperation also. It may be work difficult, even with re difficult. I can feel already that you're working together. The last speaker was evoking ECOWAS and sort of some regional institutions where it may be easier to, to also anchor you. So I'm, I'm willing to help in whichever way we can do this so that you can actually do your work, which we are ha asking you to do to help uh, the global, to support the work at the global I I IGF. How can you help each other? I think there, there are probably a lot of good experiences that many of you have in one country or in another country or in one region or another region or the youth. And there's of course a certain, somebody mentioned that, uh, even challenge of how to bring these three dimensions together, national, regional, youth, or three, three different perspectives, we, which we also need to keep together in this room. Um, so 
I think uh, I'm sure there is uh, perhaps our website and so it's already being done uh, uh, if good practices can be documented and if something really worked in one country and what kind of communication networks do exist already but I'm sure there, there there's more that can be done and that leads me to one particular point I mean you recognizing the importance of a focal point and, and Anya in particular so I'm committed to, to maintain that because I know every process in the world is, is depending on a good secretarial support. I mean, this is even being discussed at the highest level. We're saying the IGF can only function if you have a strong secretariat and secretarial support. So I think we will maintain that. That is uh, very uh, important. Uh, I heard one thing, if I, I'm not sure I heard it correctly, how the global process can help uh, the, the, the regional and national process is, is, is uh, the more focused and specific the outcomes of the global process are, the more the national regional uh, can become an implementing arm, an executing arm of what is happening at the global level. So in a way there we are pulling in the same direction, I mean because as you know there are some innovation and reform processes being discussed in the MARC at the highest level to come out with very specific concrete outcomes and I do understand that if, if, if that is happening, it makes your life also easier. So I think we are working in the same direction. Two more points I wanted to pick up. Uh, one was what I heard was with the connection with the high level panel. I think that's also part of your discussions here and I think it was the Eurodic uh, representative who said, uh, let's not only look at this one way, but the other direction is also important and I very much like that. I mean, because some of you have probably much more concrete examples of how this works then, then you may have at the very abstract level and the global uh, uh, level. And I think here are concrete opportunities and I would encourage each and every body of you to look out. I mean, there is a deadline out there, I think, to make inputs until the 30th of November for the high level panel discussion. And I think one of the things that we are all uh, uh, concerned about is that this high level panel with all its good intentions and its creativity does not come up with something completely different that is out there. How do we bring that back to an existing process like this one that is strong precisely because of you, because it's national and regional anchoring. Uh, um, and But in order to make that connection also in the people who are sitting on that high level panel saying, oh, here is a mechanism that we can use, we can strengthen rather than inventing something new, they need to know about that. So, I mean, pick up, uh, I was about to say pick up the pen, but that identifies me as an old man. I mean, take, uh, take your keyboard. And, uh, and, and write to these people that you are in a perfectly legitimate space to do that and put your concerns and ideas in, into this process. So the last point, I mean, I mean, I think there was a, uh, was, was it coming from the Ukraine sometimes? I mean, the sense that you may be fighting alone uh, and I think that's where the regional dimension comes in. I find that very often in the United Nations that one country has to deal with a particular form of adversity and the people from that country left alone are not in a good position to help themselves. But this is precisely where the United Nations and regional solidarity can come in. And I think those are the moments where um, I think I can to totally understand how for a national institution or a national organization it's very difficult to intervene. But this is precisely where you can bring in the international voice, the regional voice, and as you rightly said, then you will get the intention of of the politicians. So don't fight alone in your countries. Put put your if you bring several countries together, that I think that gets already immediately a lot more attention uh, from policymakers than if you come with your own uh, singular voice. And so. So these are just a few reflections from my perspective, rather uneducated perspective, but I mean, I'm happy to discuss this further with, with some of you and of course with the experts that are here sitting on the panel. Thank you very much for these responses. Uh, I think there were a couple of questions that touched upon the program of the IGF and the NRI's participation, so maybe uh, Lynn could comment on that and then we'll move to Chengatai. I'm very happy to do that. I'd like to build just quickly on one or two things that Stefan said though as well because I think um, there's some sort of small practical things I think we can do that would help fairly significantly. And one thing that just occurred to me is for the first time we actually gave, DESA gave um, MAG members certificates of, of being a MAG member, certificate of recognition. 
maybe there's an opportunity to build on something similar and either do something similar that recognizes an NRI or recognizes your annual meeting um, that we could do and, and perhaps even do it electronically. You can post it on the website, but something that helps with kind of the stature point that was made, made earlier. So I'm sure there are a lot of much more creative ideas out there, but, but please send them back because, I mean, I think DESA has has always and certainly showed very recently that they're very willing to, to send letters or do whatever is appropriate to really help with the recognition. And of course, that does provide um, some additional level of legitimacy and stature, which I know is one of the other questions as well. Um, in the same vein, you know, in the uh, MAG this year, we had a couple of working groups, and one of them was on fundraising. We have a very strong secretariat, we just have a too small a secretariat. <laughs> Um, we need more resources in the secretary, and in, to get those resources, we need more donors. So we actually created, just in the last few weeks, um, a, a card, um, which you probably can't see it very well here, but it says the Internet Governance Forum needs you, and there's some information on the back. This is actually done through an open source process, and we're going to make this available because you can tailor it to an NRI's needs as well. So you've, you've got the format, it's a great tool, it's free. Um, again, you can do that to support some fundraising um, efforts. We've also, in that working group, um, created, we haven't quite published it yet, um, just it was too close to this IGF to actually do sensibly, but um, sort of a high-level template for fundraising. Um, we're probably going to do, do two letters. One is a, a one-page high-level, another one um, we will leave space to tailor for specific activities. And again, we were thinking about this initially in the context of um, support for the global IGF, but very, very easily adaptable um, to the local um, NRIs or to the NRI. So I think we need to, to um, I think, pull some of that work into the NRIs. The working groups are all open. We have NRI members in all the working groups as well. But maybe make a more conscious effort to kind of co cooperate or, and uh, collaborate across some of those activities. Um, the, with respect to the program, and this is a, a generalization I know, but I know some of the NRIs like to hold their annual meetings ahead of the global IGF so that it actually informs the global IGF. And then there are some that actually prefer to do it after the IGF so they can take some of the discussions there and use that to, to drive their own activities. And I think they're, they're both great models. And I think we should, for whichever sort of end of the spectrum you end on, think about what is a, a, a way to build upon the work that you're doing and the work that's being done here at the global IGF in a more concrete way. So one of the examples perhaps might be we heard, you know, some challenges from President Macron in France. Um, maybe that's something Eurodig could actually take up and in your own process take up those specific challenges, those specific comments, run it through your Eurodig process, and then use that to feed back into next year's IGF as well, because a lot of those points I know will be of great interest to many other countries. So I think if we can find a way more kind of concretely to, to feed between the global meetings and the local meetings, we'll actually get an ongoing discussion that both benefits, we always say there's a great richness in both the global level and the local level, um, but I think we just need to find a way to tie them together in a, uh, you know, more sort of, I think, iterative, iterative kind of process. And maybe that's a, a great way for the community as a whole to both respond to some of the, the challenges and the points we heard raised and help move forward what is obviously a critical a, a agenda whether you support some of those proposals or not, but it, you know, a, a critical agenda in, in the European region. Um, the only other point I think I had, took lots of notes, was we've also been working on a multi-year strategic work program. And the notion there was that obviously a lot of the issues we deal with are not kind of easy to advance and certainly not solvable in a one-year time frame. Um, so to plan them out uh, a couple years in advance would allow all of us to bring in additional partners, um, additional collaborators. That certainly enriches the work, but hopefully it's also an opportunity for um, more resources, um, both human resources as well as uh, financial resources to support our work. So we're looking for ways to engage, um, you know, more 
more deeply and more broadly. And, you know, frankly, we have a lot of challenges in front of us in terms of there's no shortage of issues we could address. I think there's um, some difficulties in, in um, maximizing everything we have out of this network, oftentimes just because of some of the organizational challenges and, and resource and support challenges. So I think, um, you know, very fortunately, um, and thanks to Stefan and Dessa's efforts this year, um, the new MAG is appointed and will be stood up um, immediately following this IGF. Um, that's almost four months earlier than the last few years. So it's, a, it's just an enormous advantage to this coming um, IGF process and hopefully it will allow us to time to, some time to do some real good kind of iteration in, in terms of your priorities, your issues, and processes we can put in place to, to work more deeply together. Thank you very much, Lynn. And maybe just to give a final word to Chengetai, there were some questions specifically for the Secretariat. Uh, if you could maybe respond, especially questions from the academic. Okay, I'll be uh, very quick. Um, for a, a national regional IGF to be recognized, um, they have to fulfill certain criteria. Um, so if they fulfill those criteria, I think it would be logical to issue them some sort of uh, certificate, you know, which, you know, we can issue a certificate which can be used as a way to uh, show your legitimacies uh, per se if you go and approach governments and also the letters we can um, also investigate. But um, I would also encourage you, if you have a specific issue that you're trying to contact a member of the government, contact us. We've, we've done it last year for a couple of um, national and regional initiatives that we've actually, uh, because um, here at the um, IDF Secretariat, we, we do have contact with many people from um, your respective countries. So I can send an email or I can make a phone call and just make an int introduction for you and tell them what you're about. And then maybe that will help smooth things over. So please feel free to contact me or Anya for that. Um, how you can help each other. Um, apart from best practices, there's just, I mean, there's been a lot of talk, especially yesterday, about just sharing stories, sparing, sharing experiences, and I think that's one way of doing it. Um, if you don't have a website, uh, the IGF Secretariat is prepared to make a page for you, uh, which is, would be a subdomain of our website, so if you're in a country.intgovforum.org. Uh, we've done it for a couple of countries, I think Malawi and a couple of, uh, yeah, uh, we've done it for seven countries. So if you don't have the resources for our website, please contact us and we will give you um, space for a website on our uh, subdomain on our website. And we can also give you um, regional mailing lists if you so require. So you don't have to go into that expense. We have it and it's not, to, that expensive for us to add another mailing list for you to um, be able to communicate. Um, for the panel, um, yes, I do encourage you, as Lynn said and as Stefan says, to engage with the panel. Um, every single Monday, the first Monday, there is a, um, a virtual town hall meeting with the panel, so I would advise you to join that and give your ideas. Make sure that they are aware that you are there, because part of the reason is um, for the panel is that they're not aware of all the channels that they can use, so it would be good to make yourselves um, noticed. And of course, yesterday as well in the panel, um, in the open forum of the panel, they said they were also looking for champions for implementation of the report. Um, so, I mean, you could offer yourselves to be champions if you like what the report says, or if you pick a specific part of the report that you would want to champion, you can approach them when the report is out. And lastly, they also have discussion groups as well, so if you have a, a specific expertise, let them know. Um, that's one thing. The most important thing is get noticed by the secretariat of the panel. So much, Shengatai, very concrete. I think we need to help Stefan to catch his plane. Lynn, yes, Lynn has some final remarks and then. I mean, it wasn't final, it was just one quick comment if you need to leave Stefan, but I don't, I definitely don't want to make you miss your plane. Um, one of the things, just 
quick comment on the HLPDC. They're also looking for stories, sort of success stories or, or not success stories, um, if they sort of um, exemplify where a different sort of cooperation or collaboration could be. And I think the more concrete those examples are, the more helpful they'll actually find them. But what I wanted to come back in quickly on was on Sandra's comment earlier about it being a two-way learning. I mean, it's absolutely a, a two-way process. And there's a lot of processes that are happening in the NRIs in your annual meetings that I see coming into the global IGF here. And I certainly have quoted a number of times this year, specifically some of the processes I happen to see at, at Eurodig and, and follow a little bit at CDIG where, um, first of all, how you interact between the people that are on the panel and those people, the participants online or in the room, where you actually move back and forth, I think, pretty seamlessly. The second, where you actually have rapporteurs in the room that share their key messages back at the end of the session and look for some level of, is this kind of resonating with the room? Not a consensus call, per se, but is it resonating? Is this a, you know, a reasonable report from the room. So right there coming out of the room, you have some, some key messages you can start to develop. And there have been a couple of other things as well that I've seen in some of the NRIs that I've actually um, quoted and that we actually see being picked up in a lot of the sessions here. So, um, you know, we look to innovate um, wherever we can. And if you have any other ideas or any ideas on how we can improve um, the, the sessions here, some experiences we can learn from you, you know, we're, we're trying to track them and trying to bring them in, but please um, do call them out to our attention as well, because some of them in particular have been extremely helpful. Thank you very much, Lynn. And uh, just to finally thank Stefan for his time, his very busy agenda, and for excellent remarks. Thank you for being with us. I think we can uh, continue with our agenda. I think with these comments, we covered um, a lot of items from the agenda, but I would uh, ask for a final set of comments uh, if you have or questions on, um, is there anything else in addition where what the IGF can do? Yes, I think Flavio would like to comment on this context. Yeah. So glad that Lynn is still there because uh, uh, my comment is directed to, to her. Uh, so the, the MAG has a working group uh, since last year uh, dealing with a, a multi-year work program. And the idea is try to, to plan ahead. And uh, in this planning, the, this working group is also considering the identification of topics that are of relevance to the community that are collected by different means, for instance, through the call of, for issues that has been uh, made this year and that probably will, will be repeated in next years, uh, through all types of uh, intersessional activities, by surveys, uh, by the discussions uh, during the IGF itself, and so on. So if, if the, 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 the NRIs may have some idea of this or may participate or help in this multi-year planning, and we have these topics identified for uh, intersessional work along uh, not only next year, but uh, also the, in, in the subsequent years. This would help the, the NRIs to better define, better shape their agenda, their discussions at national and regional levels. And then this could make more effective bringing feedback, bringing contributions from the national and regional IGFs to the, to the global IGF, because it's very hard. If the MAG decides the topic, uh, the, main, the main topics and, and, and the results of the call for issues are identified only in May or June of the year, and, and the, the IGF is already in November, there is no time for the, 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 the NRIs really to, to to, to take advantage of this and then to integrate all those topics uh, into their agenda. So I think we have to, to, to have some mechanism there to, to better uh, create these uh, links between the NRIs and, and this multi-year planning. No, th thank you, Flavio. That's a great um, comment and reminding me of a couple of other things as well. Um, so first of all, this year we have four more months than we've had in the past, so hopefully we get much further ahead of, of a lot of these processes. 
Um, the working group on uh, MWP is the acronym, um, is fairly close to putting out a report. Um, it'll be a status report, not, not a recommendation, so just kind of capturing the work and the current status of the, of the work. One of the key pieces of work um, we did do, which was actually started by the Secretariat two years ago, was something called the IGF Component Framework Document. And that was basically a, a Word document. Um, some of the MAG members put that into um, a flow, and they used a Prezi is the application name, but you can also get it in one PowerPoint slide, which um, attempts to show all the inputs, outputs, the flow, and the relationship between them. And it's up on the website. I think it's called the IGF Program Framework Document. And they're looking for feedback in terms of um, whether or not that kind of fairly captures um, all the components of the process as it exists today. Um, I think it will serve as a useful platform for anything we might want to evolve on going forward. You know, one of the, the things that was discussed in the working group was we looked at the call for issues we did last April or May. Um, we had a certain profile of themes that were um, suggested. We then did a call for issue based on that set of themes, uh, sorry, a call for workshops based on those set of themes from the call for issues. And I mean, not surprisingly, the, what came in in the call for workshops pretty much reflected the same diversity as we saw in the call for issues. Um, I mean, at one level, you know, that means they both kind of validate each other. Um, at the same time, we fell into as a mag, well, this is a distribution we ne need to have of the program then. And when you ask globally what are the sorts of things people are interested in, you get a broad spectrum of, of issues. Some of the things I think the community needs to identify, we hear lots of too many duplicate sessions, too many themes, we need um, to, to have fewer themes and work them a little more deeply um, and a little more um, stream so that one kind of session sort of helps advance or build on another. I think there's some pretty f um, fundamental discussions the community and the MAG need to take with respect to, you know, what do we want for uh, an annual IGF meeting? Um, the, the sort we've had today, which is a pretty broad spectrum of coverage, um, built bottom up from what the community has requested, um, do we want the MAG to um, perhaps drive some other processes, whether that's um, you know, a, a, maybe a separate consultation process with the NRIs? Um, we really try and understand what would actually help advance the most important issues in your area. What could the IGF specifically do to advance that? That would require the, the MAG to be um, a little more, um, I'm not sure the right word, sort of deliberative in what it cho how it chooses to shape the overall program. And uh, I mean, so I think those are some of the discussions that are in front of us. I think your multi-year small number of topics, multi-year, um, is, is really important, and we need to do that. Um, I think that would probably be one of the easier pieces of what we're doing, but I think the, you know, the larger question of what should an annual IGF program look like and what are the things that we feel most strongly we need to to shape are the things we're going to um, have to find a way to pull the community broadly enough on. And any um, thoughts or suggestions, please help. And again, I'll remind everybody that all the working groups are open to the community. So please participate as an individual or as a representative of your NRI, but please participate. Uh, there is the survey, yeah? That should be filled by... The survey is open to the community? Thank you very much, Flavio and, um, and also Lynn. I think all working groups are open to, to the NRIs. We, sh we shared on a couple of occasions the work of this working group and what has been produced so far with the NRIs. So I think many of the NRIs are familiar, but I do understand the NRIs why they are not participating in the calls that frequently may be because the NRIs as a network really we do have a lot of calls monthly, so those calls are devoted to the joint work, and now we started with the collaborative sessions, which means you have additional set of calls. So I think that really overburdens your schedule 
uh, in addition to your uh, regular uh, work assignments, yes. Uh, but uh, if there are no more questions on this uh, first set of discussion that we heard from, uh, especially how the IGF can, ah, uh, yes, yes, please, sorry, I didn't see you. And I think if Wisdom you, is still here, he is, you wanted to speak uh, earlier, so let's hear from, from sorry, I don't know the name, and then we'll go to Wisdom. Uh, thank you, Maria, Youth IGF Movement Ukraine. Uh, I will try to be short. Um, just uh, one of the previous remarks uh, said about the need to uh, do awareness raising on IG throughout the year, like to ensure sustainable IGF to uh, contribute, to help people to have more meaningful discussions. Um, so just wanted to highlight the importance of that and uh, use IGF movement, for example, to give you a perspective on cybersecurity events. We uh, did the event in 20 countries, like gathering up to 100 and more people. Just uh, do you have any like plans for that or support for the events throughout the year that like um, help a, a kind of preparatory work for the IGF in, like, in some kind of way too? Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the question. I think we, not I think, but I know, we are very much familiar with the work of the IGF movement. And I think we do consider it as a very important capacity building activity that actually, thanks to the movement, many of the youth IGFs were later organized, uh, independently organized, and those also that are uh, aligned with the NRIs. I do think it's worth of discussing how can we create some synergies between our works, because I think it's a pity that these things are happening kind of in parallel. So um, that was actually something that I wanted to discuss tomorrow uh, with some of the colleagues from the Youth IGF movement. It would be excellent to meet also with you, maybe even invite some of the NRI colleagues, but definitely to see how can we work together uh, for future and kind of joint resources, because I think we can just with that achieve better. Thank you so much for the comment. And now to Wisdom. Thank you. Uh, Anya. Hi, uh, my name is Dustin. Hello. Phillips. Okay. Oh. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Wisdom from Ghana. Um, I just have some uh, observation uh, to make. Uh, in, I think in Africa, we have issues uh, when it comes to uh, Internet Governance uh, Forum. Now, the issue got to do with uh, one uh, government, uh, government and then the IGF itself. It, it looks like uh, people really don't uh, know what the structure is uh, when it comes to IGF. So sometimes uh, it's difficult for, let me say, example, civil society to even come in and uh, support with some of the activities uh, of IGF. So I'm thinking if possible, uh, the structure can be looked at. Uh, so that everyone is aware of a structure where someone can come in and say, oh, I'm supporting the national IGF and all that. And uh, also, uh, it looks as if in Africa, our government are too busy with uh, other activities. So sometimes when it comes to issues of IGF, they are kind of not that concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you are aware, Ghana, last year and this year, uh, we are kind of uh, blank. Uh, it's not because uh, there is no any attempt, but because government, government is too busy with other activities. Sometimes you talk to them, they don't listen, they are slow in listening and, and, and all that. So if the structure can be looked at, where civil society can step in and say, okay, we are helping uh, with a national IGF, I think uh, that will also help. Thank you, Wisdom, very much. I think you brought very important points. Um, I, I think I will um, collect a couple of more questions that I see, maybe Jennifer, APR, IGF, and then uh, respond. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, IGF USA first, you're right. Sorry. Thanks, Anya. Um, so one, one recommendation that I have uh, for improving the coordination among the NRIs and, and amplifying and improving the input into the IGF is creating some sort of repository that will help the coordination. Um, Anya, you do a fantastic job. I don't know how you do it, but, um, but having all of this coordinated over different emails, um, 
isn't necessarily the most efficient way and it, it makes it hard to follow the work that you're not actively engaged in. So with the different sessions, um, the coordination sessions, like I was involved maybe in the access, but I didn't know what was happening in the, the fake news. And maybe we get periodic updates on the calls, but if you miss those calls, it just becomes kind of easy to lose track of the process. Um, and I think that using a platform like a wiki, which those of you that know me know I love wikis, but um, the using a platform like a wiki that's open, you can kind of crowdsource the, the contribution so it's not all, it doesn't all fall on, on you. And so we had an issue this morning with the, the access session where it wasn't clear who was speaking. Even though they had been submitted in different emails throughout the weeks, um, it wasn't clear. So having a space where each NRI that's a part of that can come in and plug in where their speaker is, or who their speaker is, um, would be would be helpful. Um, and you know, it would it would be low overhead. Um, it would save you a lot of time and make you able to focus on more important things than kind of coordinating logistics. And then I think the other aspect of a repository that's helpful is it elevates the work of the NRIs because other people can see the work that we're doing and it, and it places it in the larger scheme of all the work that's not only happening here, but in the larger NRI ecosystem. There's a question for you here. That's so yeah. can we um, rely on your services to set up the wiki for the IGF? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. We'll get in touch. So we just, I know where we need to wrap up this session in a couple of minutes, but just for the information of the present NRIs, I think Dustin is probably the most creative person and expert that I met in this ecosystem. And we did discuss uh, this idea of having this repository or some, some are calling it observatory. He even showed us a couple of templates or how you call it to the secretariat, which looks very impressive to be honest. I mean, nothing less expected. So um, I think we should continue maybe showing that to the NRIs. And I know that there is a collective thinking among the NRIs that this, there's something like this should exist so that there is a one place that's not a, a page on the IGF website where the things are and where, where they will have access to edit certain things and so on. So what Dustin actually produced looks excellent to be honest. So I think we will definitely discuss this on maybe even on the first uh, call after the IGF. So now to go to the APR IGF. Thank you, Anya. This is uh, Jennifer Chung, the Secretariat uh, team of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. First of all, really want to thank you, Anya, for being our focal point. Without you, with the coordination work, there really couldn't be so much done. So, so much good input and so much output as well from, from the NRIs both within the network and towards you know, the global IGF and towards the MAG, so thank you very much for that. Um, I've been collecting a lot of points from colleagues throughout this entire section, and I'm sorry if I have a few, but I'm gonna go through them really quickly, hopefully being very brief. I wanna pick up on what Dustin from IGF USA said. I think a repository is very useful, especially when we're talking about collaborative efforts. I think very much uh, increasingly this year and from last year when we were doing the NRI collaborative sessions, I think this would be a very useful tool that will not add to the immense workload that our focal point already does to help us. And we as NRIs um, can go in and, and do our work. I think this is very beneficial. And uh, um, actually I wanted to say um, for APRGF this year, in Vanuatu, we used a wiki platform, um, thanks to Dustin, to create this collaborative space for the workshop organizers to look for potential speakers. I think this in itself can actually be a learning experience even for the global IGF. So, I mean, putting on my hat as MAG member as well, it's something that we could look at because I heard a lot of um, uh, comments and feedback from how difficult it is to find panelists, to find speakers on topics 
that uh, um, um, will show up at the IGF because of other you know, reasons, funding issues, or maybe even if uh, a person that may be new to this ecosystem have a really, really good idea for a workshop, but they don't have access to the people that they think they want to bring to a panel, I think this in itself would be a very valuable resource and we can think about it. Um, picking up on um, our colleague uh, Flavio about the, uh, having the intersectional work earlier, announced earlier, I think this is really important for the NRI network, for us to be able to plan our own schedules, to be able to reflect um, within our own uh, um, initiatives as well as reflect back into the global IGF for a learning experience. So I think that's really important and I thank Lynn for um, you know, stressing the, the fact that we are four months earlier this, this year, this cycle, so I hope this planning will, will take place really well. Also picking up on what um, our colleague Sandra said, it's a two-way street, so having a, a more collaborative environment will allow this, this dialogue to happen and I think that's really important. Um, I think I had a few more points, but I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and I just couldn't agree more, I'm sure, uh, all other NRI colleagues. Any last comments? I, just looking at the agenda, I think we have exhausted all the items, not maybe by the order in the agenda, but uh, we had uh, the discussion on the HLPDC, but I think we discussed it very extensively. Um, any other last comments? Yes, Marilyn. Marilyn and then uh, Lori. Thank you. Thank you, Anya. Marilyn Cade, IGF USA. Um, we um, didn't have a uh, recognized identity uh, in November of 2015 um, as the NRIs. We had a situation where people were attending other meetings and walking past each other because they didn't know it was a fellow coordinator that was sitting next to them or that they were standing next to at a coffee meeting. We, um, I implemented um, an informal networking uh, process at ICANN, and on our, at our last meeting we had 65 people. Um, and that's just what we call in the United States, catch as catch can, meaning who's there. Um, the, that group is now um, hosted under the IGF Support Association to make sure that it can meet each time. I'm not suggesting it's the only place to um, proselytize and create awareness, but I do think as we look at communications materials that um, looking at how we significantly enhance the communications materials that are available to the NRIs to not just um, have a certificate, but to also have a nice four-page brochure that includes some success stories, some examples, and that is available to them without cost that they can use in their own NRI if it's useful to them. It won't be useful to all, but I, um, I think that would need to be generated with input from the network of the NRIs, but be refreshed. It could be that it only could be done on a yearly basis, but I think it's one of the things that helps to build in what we say in business, it builds your brand to have a consistent identity. Thank you very much, Marilyn. That's also very concrete and to be discussed by the NRIs. And I think final comments by Lori. I understand that Lynn has a panel at three o'clock that she needs to leave. So I would like to thank her for her time, well now and also throughout the year, all support to the NRIs. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ning. Thank you, Anya and Chinji Tai and uh, every colleague here. And I really think that this uh, uh, to this meeting and uh, for this session is very fruitful. And uh, I really see uh, what we were discussed in the uh, previous session. How we really collaborate uh, in more detail, and we are talk about here. And also I think like, like a wiki, this is very uh, practical tools that we can use to bring us together. So I, I, want, I just want to see from the experience from China that we are also uh, like looking for ways to evolve and to, uh, to figure out what is the most uh, suitable way to do the IGF China because uh, 
also we see the different uh, situations in different uh, uh, regional and national initiative. So uh, we may probably uh, to do the, the uh, annual uh, forum very quickly because uh, when it happened to China, it will be a huge thing actually. So we may step uh, by step and uh, we will do more like uh, smaller forums uh, to start and collaborate uh, with other national and uh, uh, regional initiatives. And uh, we, what we all want to address is that uh, collaboration with uh, uh, other colleagues and we want to put it in the practical programs or those that can really uh, to improve the, the benefits of the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Lori, very much. I think this would have to be our last comment because I see that there are panelists coming. There is a session scheduled here at 3 o'clock. I would like to thank all the NRIs for their time, for their valuable suggestions and inputs. It seems, again, that we have uh, kind of the, not fully defined, but at least provisional agenda for the next year that we will be focusing on, and I'm looking forward. Thank you very much. And also to the non-NRI colleagues that were here with us as in a supporting role. Thank you.